All right, so I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let Mr. Dustin Smith take over from here. So Dustin, whenever you're ready, floor is yours, sir. Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dustin Smith. I'm the territory manager for the elite group of professionals. Uh, we service all of Southern California, so all the way up to Valencia, down to uh, the Mexican border. We're open seven days a week. We currently have 87 inspectors. They're all InterNACHI certified, car certified, and insured as well. Um, outside of inspection for homes, we also do property um, for commercial properties as well. We do roof certifications. We do um, sewer line inspection. We can do termite. We can do mold. Uh, we also offer the roof certification and an extended warranty program up to six years as well. And our basic inspection programs will give you anywhere from 90 days to five years of lease. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is go over this class, give you a little idea of how the inspection industry came to be. I'm going to drop some tidbits along the way to help you guys go ahead and uh, make your liability as small as possible. And as we continue to go through, explain some of the things that Elite has done to go ahead, go ahead and become the uh, inspection professional standard. Um, it is an open forum. I don't check chat a lot, so I would recommend if you have any questions or want something repeated, feel free to unmute yourself and just hop right in. At the end of this, the real hope is that you guys will understand why Elite is a company you should try to work with, but more importantly, that you guys get some value out of this. So with that said, I'm gonna jump right in. Uh, my contact info is in the chat. Feel free to go ahead and text me your name and email address. I will then send you a digital copy of the brochure, which I'll be going over here towards the end, as well as a sample report. So with that said, I'm going to attempt to share my screen and, and get this started. Are there any questions prior to us beginning? All right, I'm gonna jump right in. So hopefully with sharing the screen, this works most of the time. Let's see if we can get there. So we might have to do this. Let's see. Yes. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yeah. All right, everybody has that screen in front of them? No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay, so here's where we're gonna have technology. Gotta love it. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So I think I need to go to the share my screen. Actually, this should be open already. Close that. Okay. Let's go to share screen. How about now? Does everybody see it? There we go. Oh, you got it. Yep. All right, there we are. <clears throat> okay. And again, like I said, as we go through, feel free just to uh, go ahead. And if you have anything you want to add, any questions, whatever it's going to be, just here to provide value. And uh, we're going to jump right into it. So the elite group you can see here is our mission statement. Uh, what we're looking for is to go ahead and uh, conduct the best possible home inspection experience for everybody involved, selling side, listing side, clientele. We just wanna make sure that everybody completely feels heard, has their questions answered, and understands exactly what we're attempting to do as the inspection company. Uh, also, we wanna make sure that when we conduct our inspections that uh, clarity is the focal point. So the reason we wanna really go ahead and harp on that is so that if there are questions, that everybody's able to go ahead and hear the question and have the question answered so we can all completely understand exactly where we're at in the process when Ely is involved. And then finally, we wanna go ahead and make sure that we continue to go ahead and really build you guys up like the stars you are. I mean, by the time you guys have gotten to inspection, you've done so much work by working your farms. I'm sure you've had a door knock. I'm sure your Facebook ads. I mean, there's just a lot that it gets involved to finally get in a buyer and then getting a buyer to the position to be in that it's time for inspection. So when you go ahead and you put your orders in, Feel free to reach out to me directly if you want a Spanish speaker or a Mandarin speaker, a woman or a man, ex-military. Let me know what you need. We'd like to go ahead and really focus on maybe making every inspection as unique as your buyer. So although we do about 600 inspections every week, which is the most in the country, we still try to go ahead and make each one of those experiences um, really built around your clientele and the kind of brand that you built yourself up to be. The history of inspections is actually not all that old. Back in 1984, there was the famous Easton versus Strasburger case. Basically, a family had purchased a home. There were a ton of problems inside the home after they closed that they realized they went ahead and sued. And basically, what the courts had decided was that moving forward, it would be the realtor and the agent's um, responsibility to go ahead and disclose any problems with the house that would uh, go ahead and uh, reflect on it negatively. 
Well, basically, you guys know because of your car certifications and because you are realtors, that that's well outside of the spectrum of what you need to do. So uh, what happened is agents and brokers got together and introduced Bill 1406. Bill 1406 said there had to be a seller's disclosure. Basically, anything that the seller knew that was wrong with their property that would affect the value negatively had to go ahead and be disclosed. Um, the AVID was also introduced. And then CAR themselves went ahead and put on all the forms that they highly recommend that someone who's going to go ahead and purchase a property or sell a property could go ahead and reach out and find a professional home inspection company to be a third party eye. And what you really want to go ahead here and focus on is the word professional. In the state of California, property inspection is 100% unregulated. So if you want to go ahead and be an inspector or an inspection company, all you need is a business license. You aren't required to pass any tests. You aren't required to go ahead and carry any particular insurances. You literally can go ahead and just get a business license and say, I'm going to be an inspector. So because that has been there and because that has always been an issue, Carr wanted to make sure that possible sellers or buyers understood that because it's unregulated, that they had the ability to go ahead and do some research on their own and weren't going to go ahead and be pigeonholed just into the inspection or inspectors that their agent had gone ahead and uh, asked them to use or suggested they use rather. So now that we know it's a completely uncertified and unregulated industry, it's really up to each and every one of these inspection companies to set their own standards. For the elite group, we've gone with InterNACHI, which is the uh, International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. Um, it's a course that never stops. So it takes about 90, um, about 90 hours of classroom time to go ahead and get into the position in which you are able to go ahead and get into the InterNACHI program. You then have to go through the InterNACHI uh, classes as well, uh, which requires another 30 hours. And then after that, you have to take monthly tests in order to go ahead and keep your certification alive. And then eventually you can get to the level of certified master inspector. If you go ahead and get to the level of certified master inspector, it means you can also teach the program. Our headquarters out in Rancho Cucamonga, we actually are a teaching facility. People fly in about twice a month to come in and we actually train their inspectors on how to go and be certified through InterNACHI. And we are the largest West Coast operative for InterNACHI as well. So again, this is one of those things you wanna go ahead and make sure you talk about with any inspection company you're gonna work with, given that it's an unregulated industry, you wanna find out what is their standard of operation? What are they doing to ensure that they're gonna have the same kind of quality of inspection time after time after time, so you can be ensured that when you work with these companies, they're gonna to continue to go ahead and operate in that manner. Oh, also along with the uh, car certif, I'm sorry, along with the certification for InterNACHI, all 87 of our inspectors are car certified. In order to be a car certified inspector and be able to be researched on CAR's website, you have to pass a criminal and federal background check and every single one of our inspectors has. I'm sure many of you agents know there's times you've had to leave the property and have the inspector stay on their own. It's good to know that you have someone who's passed these background checks so you understand they have the same moral compass that you operate at. Another reason it's important to go ahead and make sure that you use a professional inspection company and really vet them is because again, in an unregulated industry, they don't have to carry any kind of insurance. For the elite group, we carry a $1 million of E&O insurance policy that's errors and admissions. We also carry an additional $1 million policy for workers comp. So should we go ahead and actually damage the home? We could pay for that out of E&O. Um, if one of my guys or gals was um, to fall off of a roof and get hurt, they would not be suing the seller of the property. We have the workers comp to take care of it in-house. Those are very important things you wanna make sure you use when you vet. And we'll go over that a little bit later as well. Um, but here's one of the worst stories we've ever come across about using somebody um, as a home inspector who doesn't have any kind of insurance and keeps their liability wide open, which in turn keeps your liability wide open. It's the famous Autorse versus Caesar case. Um, a family was getting ready to buy a home. And as you know, just like this market, they had seen several homes. They had lost out on a few different properties. They've had to miss work. They've had to get their credit season. They've had to run through years of tax records in order just to go ahead and get to this position. So when they finally get to the house that they want and the offer is accepted and they're getting ready to go ahead and do the inspection, the uh, inspector that was appointed by their agent shows up and smells a little bit like alcohol. The uh, wife in this particular instance uh, wasn't very happy about it and wanted to push it off. But the husband was tired of missing work and waiting to go through all these hoops and said, forget it, just let him go ahead and do the job and get the inspection done. So this unlicensed contractor goes ahead and he's in the house for about two hours. Well, the couple had a previous engagement. They had to leave the property. Now it's just the agent and the inspector. And when the actual um, 
agent has to leave the property due to a showing, she tells the inspector, please lock up or see you tomorrow morning. She leaves the property. So the next morning, what happens is they come back to the property, open up the front door, and there's about an inch and a half of water all through the bottom of the home. What had happened is that this unlicensed contractor had gone upstairs to check the drain pan in the master bedroom. The drain pan is an apparatus that goes ahead and will collect uh, slow to drain water to keep it from backing up the tub. Well, this particular tub did have a slow leak, and this inspector left the water running overnight and flooded the home. The resulting damage was $57,400. Does anybody have a guess to who the seller sued on that? Feel free to unmute yourself. Anyone? The agent. The agent. That, there you go. Exactly. The agent. So the seller was going to go ahead and try to sue the inspector. The inspector says, I don't even have the $100 I charge you guys to do this. He files bankruptcy. He's no longer an asset you can go after. So the judge basically tells the uh, seller of the home, the agent is the one that went ahead and put this unlicensed contractor into this transaction. Therefore, they can be liable. And sure enough, the case went that way. It was a $57,400 ruling against the agent that had to pay it out of pocket. So this is just an example of having to understand the liability you take on as an agent when you bring other people into your transaction. So it's extremely important that you do the vetting process, especially in an unregulated industry. Another thing that we've seen in California, obviously we lead the uh, country in uh, lawsuits, no big surprise there. But in California, what we've noticed is about 78% of the cases that get in front of uh, judges for real estate happen to do that happen to do with the inspection is because it's proper expectations weren't set. So the agent didn't go ahead and truthfully or fully explain what an inspection does and does not do to their buyer or seller. So when the buyer or seller then went ahead and received the final product, they weren't happy with what they had received. Um, one of the biggest things we've seen with, uh, with setting proper expectations is the deal killing side of things. There's a lot of agents out there who unfortunately feel like, hey, inspectors come in, they go ahead and they say way too much and they scare my buyers away or they upset the seller or an inspector comes in, they walk the property for 30 minutes and just tell me everything's all right. And now there's no um, actual trust built between the agent and the inspector and the inspector and the client. But one of the things that we like to go ahead and do is make sure that all of our inspectors go through non-deal killing language training. And what that means is that they're not going to be using adjectives. We're not here to go ahead and give you um, how we feel about the property. We're here to go ahead and let you know exactly what the property looks like. The real job of any proper inspection company is to go ahead and give the status of the investment as it sits. And that's something I try to repeatedly put into my inspectors' minds is our opinions are not what's getting us hired. It's our expertise. Let's go ahead and let's let them know the status of the home as it sits. Some of the areas we see that are problem issues, if there are any. Um, and really go ahead and just give them a better idea prior to them jumping into a 30-year commitment to let them know here is actually the state of your investment prior to having to go ahead and get into a mortgage. Uh, secondly is before the inspection. Uh, because we carry that $1 million policy for e &O insurance, we cannot touch personal items. So as you go ahead and you're showing the house or you're getting ready for the inspection, make sure that we, we as inspectors have clear pathways to go ahead and inspect the property. A lot of times what happens is water heaters are covered up by personal items. I can't go ahead and start moving boxes. I don't want to drop grandma's china. I don't want to go ahead and put a hole through, you know, the third grade picture you drew a Garfield for your mom. You've really got to go ahead and make sure that all those items are moved out of the way. Uh, the other two big problems that we run into here is excess cleaning supplies and storage under sinks. And then anytime that we cannot get to the attic. So if the attic um, is either sealed shut or if it's an older home, and the entrance to the attic is located in the closet. I need that closet. I need everything out of that closet. I don't want to stand a dress with a tape measure on the way up or anything along those lines. So as you go ahead and do your AVID, please take a mental note to make sure that we're able to go ahead and physically be able to access all parts of the home. Otherwise, you have to come out a second time. You've got to make a little room in your schedule. And even worse yet, you've got to inconvenience your client to some more time to come out for the re-inspection as well. Uh, thirdly, is this is more for a new home build is does the perfect house exist? The answer is no. We are imperfect creatures that make imperfect products. So a lot of times new buyers will feel that the new buyer's warranty will take care of everything when in, act, in actuality, it's very limited to what it really does cover. And you have to remember when we are coming in as inspectors, we're looking for issues. We're not looking to go ahead and make sure the house was built correctly or it looks like the blueprint. We don't have access to those items. 
we want to make sure what's in front of us is running correctly and it's safe and is going to be something that we ourselves would want to live in or have corrected. Uh, third or fourthly, rather, we are generalist. It's important to let your clientele know, clientele know we cannot see through walls. Uh, we aren't going to take pictures off of walls. We aren't going to go ahead and move carpet around. We aren't going to rip any carpet up. It's going to be a visual inspection that we can use tools to give us a better idea of what we're looking at, but we can't physically go ahead and open up walls or go ahead and try to find pipes that are three feet behind walls. It is a visual inspection. And it's really important to me that you put that in front of your clientele at first because it's so much easier to knock down a molehill than it is to walk through a mountain. So get used to having those conversations so you can set those expectations so your clientele doesn't have a big surprise at the end because they expected something that wasn't going to happen. Also, we do not fix anything. So if we go to a property and something is broken, we aren't going to be fixing it. Uh, we also don't go ahead and give you estimates on how much it will cost to fix it. I do have some other tools that we're explaining here towards the end that can help with the estimation of cost. But as far as physically fixing items um, and giving a cost to fix the items, that will not be given on our general report. And then lastly, it's to protect your reputation. So if you have a client that's worried about the chimney or a client that's really worried about the roof or a client that's worried about electrical, these are things as you build up um, the expectation of your client, let us know. So I can go ahead and make sure that I put a notation on one of my inspectors file. Hey, this particular buyer has a lot of worry about the left side eat, whatever it may be. Let me know again so we can really go ahead and make sure that all of their worries or questions are answered or at least put to rest. And again, to make sure that we can make you look at the shining stars that you guys are. Because although they are the paying client to our company, realistically, you are the ones who are gonna go ahead and get in front of more people than I am to suggest they possibly work with us. Are there any questions about that? All right, looks like not, I guess not. I don't hear anybody at least. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, so another way to kind of go back to the generalist and another great way to go ahead, especially to first time buyers and to describe an inspection, um, we are generalists. So if you had a little tickle in your throat and you went to your doctor and during the examination, they found that you had a heart palpitation, they would then send you to a cardiologist. The same way that if I come to your property and your HVAC system isn't working correctly, I'm going to recommend that an HVAC specialist comes in and take a deeper look to diagnose the issue and see what the real problem is. So the idea that we are generalists, I think is best put in that format of how doctors are going to take care of you, your primary but when it goes to a more severe situation, a particular part of the body, they would go to a specialist, very similar with home inspection. We had spoken earlier about going ahead and making sure we have access to the property. This picture itself is actually from one of our reports. And believe it or not, on the right-hand side there where that ladder and boxes are, behind that is actually a water heater. We were not able then to go ahead and inspect the water heater and this became an incomplete inspection. And that second bullet point, would go ahead and represent what was put on the actual report, personal items present at the time of inspection. So again, in order to carry that insurance, I can't move personal items. So if there's something like the situation we're looking at now, where there's absolutely no way to get to the water heater, one of two things will happen. Either one, we'll go ahead and schedule to come back out and take a look at it. It's additional $200, by the way, for a, for a re-inspection and the time off of work and you having to find some uh, time in your busy schedule. Or Two, we can go ahead and consider an incomplete inspection. And the problem there is anybody who is going to be purchasing the home um, or selling the home, at that point, that would be a mute item because it was never inspected. So if that water heater goes out pretty quickly, it's going to be a tough road between the two parties because there was never an inspection done and both parties knew that going forward. So again, as you do your avid, just kind of have the idea, is this accessible to an inspector to give a complete inspection on my client's behalf? Uh, also, a side note here, something to, to help your liability out. Don't do your AVID the same day as the home inspection. I know a lot of agents out there kind of have the idea that it's two birds, one stone. Well, the inspector's going to be there. I'll be there. We'll just get the AVID done. You don't want to do that because, again, since we are considered a visual inspection, and obviously the AVID is a visual inspection, if we were to find something that you did not find and then have to go to court, uh, the judge could bring up your due diligence was not done. Because again, we're not moving pictures, we're not moving um, furniture, we're not moving rugs, and either are you during your AVID. So we should have very similar reports. Now, if your AVID is done before the inspector gets there or before the inspection, then those two reports would never correlate anyways. 
So now that we know that it's an unregulated industry and uh, there's a lot of different things out there, a lot of moving parts, how do you guys go ahead and vet companies? How do you become an arm of a company that you may work with? How do you make sure who you're working with is going to have your back should things go awry? Uh, right here are the four best bullet points that we've gone ahead and spoken with some of our uh, biggest agents about. And you know, doing this for 36 years, we've learned quite a bit. Uh, the number one, which is probably good for any product when it comes to service, is do not go ahead and select somebody on flat rate fees. It just doesn't make sense. This is a service. So based on the size of the home and the type of home, the prices are going to vary. For example, the first 1,500 square feet of an inspection for us is $399. Then about every 250 square feet, the price jumps a little bit. If you see a company that says, whether it's 800 square feet or 8,000 square feet, we're going to charge this price, I would be very wary of that because the amount of time that is put in between properties that are that large and that small is massive. The average inspector needs about an hour per thousand square feet. So knowing that the price is going to be different. Secondly is reviews. And this is where you as agents really have to become students of the game. You're going to have to do a little bit of work because we know it's unregulated. We can't just go to the California state site and look up home inspections because it doesn't have anything there. So going ahead and doing the reviews, using Yelp, going ahead and finding out what past clientele have said, a better business bureau, really going ahead and diving in pretty deep on that is really a great way to go. Um, the Elite Group, we are the most reviewed inspection company in the country. Right now, we have over 5,000 five-star reviews. So feel free to use all of these vetting comparisons with us as well to go ahead and make sure that you understand where we're coming from. But also you can use this as a measure because I do believe we are the best. Uh, thirdly is e and insurance, errors and admission insurance. The two things you want to know here is one, do they have it? And two, is it current? Three, I guess also could be the amount of coverage, but those two are really the most important. Um, anybody who has e and insurance as a service provider should have no problem sending you a copy on demand. So you can see that it is current, you can see what the coverage is, and you can see that um, it actually is valid. It isn't just a piece of paper they pay for one time and then let it lapse. And then finally is going to be reputation. This is where you need to go ahead and use your sphere of influence. Talk to the big producers in your office, talk to your broker, talk to your team leaders. I'm sure everybody on here has at least one friend on social media that works for another brokerage. Reach out to them. Really go ahead and find out the company you're bringing in. Are they going to have your best interest moving forward? And are they going to operate on that same moral compass that you have? Uh, one thing I've learned in business, if, if anything, is that bad service gets the most travel. And what that means is if somebody has a bad experience, they will tell everybody they know about it. Good experiences have to be asked about. And another way you can think about this is, let's say you and your friend go out to dinner and the dinner is horrible and the service is horrible. You're probably going to tell everybody you talk to the next few days. You're going to find a way to bring in the conversation. If you go out and have an amazing dinner and it's great, you will go ahead and talk about it should someone ask. It's just the way that emotion response works when it comes to service. Are there any questions about that, the vetting process? All right. So here's something I worked for a few years at Tom Ferry uh, selling real estate coaching. And there were a few things I kept hearing over and over. And and questions that were asked. And for a long time, it seems like the rule of thumb, people thought as long as I go ahead and I refer three separate companies when it comes to inspection, my liability is gone because I've given them so many options. Um, that was never true. I'm not really sure how that started. There is no set number of options you can give and then have your liability dissipate. Uh, realistically, what it is, is you wanna go ahead, research the companies you're going to refer. And then after that, you wanna include this third bullet point. So if you have a chance, I would either screenshot this, take a picture or write it down and start to put this in practice. Uh, what you wanna do is go ahead and when it's inspection time, send an email to your client. Hey, it's inspection time, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer. I uh, just wanna go ahead and give you guys some ideas of some companies I've worked with before. Here are three or four companies. But I'd also recommend that you go ahead and go online and look for some other professional home inspection companies in California on your own. By the way, um, are you still going ahead and meet with the gardener uh, next Thursday or next Wednesday? Talk to you soon. Now, we don't really care about the gardener. What we're looking for is a response. If they can give us a response, if they read through the email, we want to be able to show that we gave them the option to go ahead and look into any other company available. So that it shows we never said, hey, you had one of three options. We're saying, here are the three I prefer, but there's a ton out there and I recommend you do some research on your own. That will go ahead and save you because if you get an um, inspection company that comes in and let's say causes damage to the house 
and um, is refusing to go ahead and pay. And then you find out they don't have insurance. And then the seller wants to come back and say, well, they're only here because of you. You can say, actually, there were a few different options here. They went with this option. So it wasn't just, I'm not the only reason here. This is the company of their own choosing. It happens to be a company that I've worked with before, but I had let them know that the world was their oyster and they happened to choose this pearl. And that will go ahead and limit your liability as well. Oh, sorry, did anybody else need that? Anyone else need to write that down or take a picture? Kind of skipped over it a little quick there. All right, looks like we're all right. So another thing that the Elite Group does that really separates us from the pack is our use of technology. Uh, the top left here, what you see, that's an infrared gun. So we can actually see temperature. And what it will do is it'll show us uh, reds and oranges and yellows for hot and purples and pinks and blues for cold. And what we can use this for is to see if there's a possibility of moisture buildup in a wall, which could possibly be a leak. We can also see that if um, electrical boxes are running too hot, and we can also test the HVAC to make sure that it's blowing clean and correct and there's any breakage in the line. On the top left there, we need to see us using it. If you look and you see that left uh, rectangle that's kind of orange with a yellow bottom, that's a, a heater and you can see the heat coming off of it and how it's spreading over the floor. And then you can see the uh, cold blue windows that are still taking the temperature from outside. And this is a um, piece of machinery that is used throughout all of our inspections, regardless of which level you decide to pick. Every single one of our inspections will have that used. To the right of that is our sewer camera system. That's a long camera that we send down the uh, sewer line, down the uh, outline. And what we're looking for here is breakage, um, any kind of root intrusion. Um, is it actually completed? And we try to go all the way out to the city line or as long as your line will let us. A secondary report is then manufactured along with a tab where your clients can see the physical video shot at their property. The sewer line is 225 to add on or 275 to go on its own. And those are things we can cover at the end, but the sewer line would be an add on. Finally, there at the bottom is the crawl bot. We actually just got rid of these. We're going back to physically getting under homes. The reason that we're doing uh, back to physical people is because uh, these robots break down and they're expensive, but also they can't give us any idea of smell or moisture. This way, if we physically get under a house, we can really go ahead and diagnose if there's moisture, where it's coming from, and then obviously smells, which could be a ton of different other things. But again, just getting a picture of it with a crawl bot wasn't sufficient to go ahead and give you a complete report. We also have drones now. So all 87 of my inspectors are FFA certified and can, try, it can uh, go ahead and pilot these drones. The drones are mostly used for large tile roofs. We will not climb on tile roofs because uh, they break quite often and they're slippery. <clears throat> we can still throw ladders around the perimeter, take pictures and use the thermal camera to give you an idea of the health of the roof though. What I'd like to do and we'll see if this works out is I wanna show you a quick video of this uh, technology in action. And sometimes it works perfectly and other times it doesn't. So hopefully this will be one of those times it works perfectly. Do you guys see the YouTube uh, page up on your, in front of you? Yes. Perfect, okay. This is actually Mike Spears. He's now our COO. Um, at this time when this video was shot a few years back, he was our uh, master inspector, but he's gonna show us how by using the infrared technology, we found an active leak that was not visual um, and could not actually be felt either. But by using that technology, we were able to find it. No sound. I'm oh, sorry, what was that? There's no sound. Can't hear him. Oh, gosh. So it's loud on my end. I'm not sure why it's... Well, here's what I do is I'll go ahead and I'll just, I'll, I'll just talk through it then because um, I'm not sure I can get the audio on that. Zoom. This happens sometimes. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I apologize. So let's do this. All right, so what he's talking about here is they were at a build down in uh, South Orange County and they were in the garage and they noticed that there was some patchwork. Do you guys hear me? Okay, so they yeah. noticed there was some patchwork and uh, anytime we see patchwork, we're all automatically gonna put the, the, um, the gun on it as we call it. So here we are going to take a look and you, you can see the middle of the screen, you see that purple, that lets us know that there's a temperature change there. So the rest of that ceiling, seems to be at a pretty ambient temperature, no big deal, but all of a sudden we see that purple spot, which makes us wonder, why is there a temperature change there? So what Mike is gonna do now is he's gonna get onto the ladder and he's gonna pull out a moisture meter. And what the moisture meter would do would give us an idea if there is in fact moisture that is stuck in that particular area. So now he's gonna climb up the uh, ladder and uh, go ahead and show us if there's any kind of reading on the meter itself. And again, this technology is used on every single one of our inspections. 
So here's my, now this is the moisture meter and you slide it in around the spot that we saw earlier. And if you look at the red and green lines, you're starting to see them move a little bit. And right now they're all the way gone. And here we go. He just found a spot. And that spot ended up having 83% moisture. So what we had found out is that prior to the inspection, there was a leak. The uh, home seller took care of it themselves. Unfortunately, it was not taken care of correctly. The leak was still active. And although we couldn't see anything or feel anything, because we were able to go ahead and use these tools, we found an active leak. And to me, that's really such a great, uh, a great valuable experience for you guys to see that through Elite, is that we're able to go ahead and take all of this technology and find ways to, even though it's a visual inspection, to really go ahead and make sure that we give you the best idea of the health of the property and find some things that the human eye or the human touch wouldn't pick up by going ahead and using these really great tools. Any questions about that? Good to go. All right. Oop, jumping ahead here. All right. So basically what we have here, this is new model and old model, but realistically what this is, it's listing and pre-listing. So the old model or the usual that we've seen is someone puts their house up for sale. The buyer comes in, submits an offer. We do the home inspection. And then the two sides discuss, credit, discuss credits on how to go ahead and offset anything that was found in the house that could affect it negatively. Um, with a pre-listing, what we're doing is doing the inspection first, having all the repairs done, listing the property for the Heights comp in the neighborhood, and then sitting there and going through offers. For the pre-listing, um, this is primarily going to be used uh, for uh, either motivated sellers. So those are sellers that are probably moving out of state or already live out of state and aren't interested in having a rental property or an investment clients. So a lot of people who flip houses, on Sunday, I always get a list from these people saying, hey, here are the three properties I need my pre-inspections on. Let's go ahead and get this, this, and this done. We get it all done. They get it repaired. We come back out. We give them a clean report, and then they can list it for the highest in the area. Now, regardless if you go for a pre-listing or a regular inspection, the cost is the same. All of the warranties are the same. And the report turnaround time within 24 hours is all the same. It's just two different um, models that we offer in case anybody out there is interested in pre-listing or it has some investment clients as well. A uh, little side note, up in Northern California, they've always done it with the pre-listing side. Like in Berkeley, every transaction is pre-listed. You come in and have to do a pre-listing before you can list it. Same with Tennessee. So it's not a, although it's odd to us, it's not a, it's not unique around the world there. Um, AC and heater. These are some of the biggest units of the house. And often for buyers, these are some of the, the biggest concerns. Um, one thing we have seen over our time is that some home warranty and some inspection companies will simply come in and take a, look, take a look at the age of a unit and write it off as near the end of life. At the Elite Group, we do not do that. We're looking for functionality. So if we come in and see that an AC or heater unit is a little bit older or a little bit beat up, but it's running perfectly and we don't see any signs outside of regular wear and tear, we will not write that up. So that is one of those, one of those things as you're doing your Avid, if you see it's an older unit and you're not going to work with Elite, I would go ahead and have a short conversation with their inspector on how they're going to list that on the report because age should not simply go ahead and be a red flag. Plumbing is one of the biggest headaches too as well, because obviously when plumbing goes awry, there's a lot of money that's to come out of pocket. Um, the things that we really go ahead and have to put in our report when we're going ahead and doing our home inspections is galvanized plumbing uh, because it's outdated. It was used in the early 1920s until about 1970 or so. And then it went all the way uh, just to copper. So we know if we see really old plumbing, we have an issue. Improper connections and problematic material. The problem that we run into here the most is when we have it the do-it-yourselfers who have gone ahead and tried to fix things on their own. We had a house in Riverside a few years ago where some pipes had burst underneath the home and the homeowner had gone ahead and used PVC pipe, which is not regulated for that kind of water use, duct tape and some plumber's glue and uh, just made a huge mess of it. It looked fine, but once we got under the actual house itself, it was just a huge problem. So these are the things we have to call out because over time, they definitely will not stand the test of time. Electrical is another big one. I think the biggest thing here is because everything we have these days plugs in, right? Your TV, your watch, your phone, your pad, I mean, whatever it's going to be, it seems it has to at one point or another go into a socket. So with this, what we're really looking for is to make sure the house is grounded unless it's a craft home. So obviously if it's a home that's you know, very old, it's not going to be, um, Grounded, it's probably going to have bulk aluminum wire. And those are things we're put in the report, but they will be expected given the age of the home. What we're really looking for here is to make sure that the um, circuit breakers are all good to go, that we don't have double wires, single breaker, 
We want to make sure that uh, the ground is available. We also want to make sure that temperature at the light switches, temperature at the actual box itself are correct. So this is actually a picture from one of our actual inspections. And you can see right there on the thermal gun, we're getting 96.6, which is completely fine. You can see that the, uh, it's actually a relatively cool running unit. All the blue around it is the steel box that the unit itself sits in. Um, one of the things we will call out is if the um, actual fuse box or the circuit breaker or the uh, line itself is no longer manufactured. So like there's some Sylvanias that aren't made anymore. There's a couple of different brands out there. So if we go there and see that the actual electrical is something that's no longer manufactured that has to go on the report, because if it was to blow, you can't fix it, you'd have to replace it. Um, but outside of that, we're really just looking for the functionality when it comes to electricity. And um, also a reminder, we don't inspect to code. So again, we're looking for functionality. So if there was something that was out of code, we would not be pulling any kind of reports to know that it is, is functionality. Roof is by far the number one uh, most concerned point that we run across. And it's because that's the one thing that nobody goes on. Hopefully as agents, I'm not sure how your broker feels, but most agents do not get on roofs. Um, I have yet to see a buyer get on a roof. So when we get up there, we can really give you a story of what we're looking at. And uh, this is a house in Anaheim a few years back. It was actually a flip property. They went ahead and redid everything except for the roof. They had new light switches, new light works. They put in all new eaves. They repainted, they restucco, put in a new garage, put in a new driveway, put in new floors. And then we got on the roof and saw this. So here's a bunch of problems with this roof. Uh, you can see there's been two different times at least that they tried to fix the roof with two different materials. The eave is beginning to separate from the house itself. And if you can see some of these white patches, this is actually spray paint. But these other white patches, those are where are called calcium ponds. And what that means is that when the water goes, it gets stagnant. It doesn't drain off the roof. So it becomes a little pond. And as the water evaporates the liquid away, all the calcium and minerals stay behind, leaving a ring. And that shows us right there that this is not properly draining. After a further review, this entire uh, roof had to be replaced. So again, getting a company that knows what they're doing, that's going to go ahead and go all the way through it and not just look at the outside of it and say it looks great, but physically walk the property and get on the roof when we can. This is really going to be the elite difference to give you the best idea of the status of the property as it sits. Rustin, can, yes. I, can I just say something? Can you turn your computer so that your speaker is more in front of you? Because I'm losing half of what you're saying. Oh, no. I mean, if you just, just right in front of yeah, because when you talk to the side, then it yeah. gets muffled. Okay, I can't. Thank okay. you for saying is, is this better? Is this good right now? I'm going to yes, assume this better. Is okay. that's better. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we do also we do also offer a roof certification program. That roof certification program is anywhere from two to six years, and it's completely transferable. So if a family bought a six year and moved out three years later, the remaining three years would now go to the occupant of the house. Um, and those start again from two to six years, as low as two hundred and seventy five dollars. It's really a great program. It's a hundred percent against leaks. It also repair the roof. Um, for any damage outside of vandalism or act of God. Um, and again, we're kind of going over that here towards the end as well. The attic is one of the most important parts to be inspected in a home. The attic is actually going to give us the real uh, picture of the health of the roof from underneath. We're going to be able to see any kind of water damage. We're going to be able to see if any of the uh, wood itself is deteriorating, uh, signs of any kind of pest, including termites. We're also going to be able to go ahead and make sure that all the studs have not separated. Uh, make sure the installation is uh, correctly installed. If there's any open, open wiring that it's inside of what's called a J-box, which is a small metal box. And what its idea is that if there was a spark, it would keep it inside of that box. It would not let it touch anything else and possibly start a fire. Um, so this is really important that we can get in the attic. Uh, if you see for some reason that the attic is closed off or locked off, let us know. And we might be able to bring some tools in to go ahead and pry over painted uh, sills or to go ahead and bust the lock if there's some reason way to get in the attic. The attic is, is paramount to really understanding the health of the house, as well as being able to get a better um, view of the HVAC system and the ventilation required. So here's a question that we get uh, quite often is, uh, who should be present at the inspection? We believe that everybody should be. I mean, if it's a new buyer and they want to bring their family, that's fine. All that we ask is give us a little bit of room to go ahead and perform the inspection safely. Um, in the past, we've actually had people go ahead and go up ladders with us. Can't let that happen. Or people kind of go, you know, every step with us asking us questions. We're physically building this report in a tablet as we're at the house. It's a living, breathing organism that we're trying to build and put together for you. 
Um, at the end of the inspection, our inspectors are instructed to take 10 to 15 minutes to kind of just give you an overall. But what we're going to do is set up a secondary conversation. It can be face, uh, FaceTime, it could be in-person lunch, it could just be a phone call or a text, which is why all of the inspector's information is on the front of your report. So we can use that clarification I spoke about at the beginning of the presentation to make sure that everybody involved really does go ahead and understand exactly what we found and we can explain our findings to them clearly. Earlier today, I said to go ahead and make sure you do some vetting. Here's an example. Um, you can see where we go ahead and we get five star after five star. So feel free to go ahead and vet us when you vet other companies. Um, again, we are the most uh, uh, reviewed company when it comes to inspection in the country. So feel free to go ahead and chase us down and anybody who's gone ahead, I'm sure they're gonna have links to go ahead and look at other companies as well. But I'd strongly recommend you guys using any of the tools I've given you today and practice by vetting the elite group so you can make sure everything I say to you is correct. But even more importantly, let us be the standard measure as you move forward. Uh, so real quick, just want to go over this, uh, the, the, the uh, trifold here. Like I said, if you send me, if you text me your email address, I'll be able to go ahead and get this sent to you. Uh, the first page is going to talk about our basic elite package, which is the entire property. Uh, the, second pro the second page talks about the plus package which goes ahead and gives you longer and stronger uh, guarantees as well as that repair price uh, Lastly, it's going to be about our auxiliary services. So we do offer the sewer cameras. That can be with an inspection or by itself. We don't have to get an inspection to use our auxiliary services. Uh, we have the roof certification, which we spoke about anywhere from two to six years, starting off as low as $275. We do test for mold. We can either do air quality testing. That's going to be when you put a machine up in the house and then we actually get readings on our phones about parts per square inch in the particle air. Or we can go ahead and do actual physical swabs, which are then sent off to a lab three to five days. They'll send us back um, the actual results of letting us know if it was mold or mildew and what type of mold it was. Should we find mold? We do termite inspections. Um, they're $125, but if you go ahead and come through me directly, I can knock that down to $95. Just mention that you were part of Home Inspection 101, and I'll get that discount to you. Uh, we also do a pool and spas. Those are $100. With pools and spas, though, we're looking for all of the parts of the building. So we're looking at skimmers, we're looking at heaters, we're looking at lights, and we're looking um, at the cleaning system. So if there was a large crack, we'd recommend that a pool inspector, as far as a structural engineer, takes a look at it. We're just looking at the functionality of the pool and its pieces. We do do salt pools, but we cannot go ahead and inspect salt baskets that would have to be per the manufacturer. Um, finally, what we have is that repair pricer, which I spoke about earlier, and that's a secondary report that will give you estimated costs to find uh, what it will take to fix the problems we found. Each one of these repair pricers is based on the home itself, the year it was built and its zip code. So we need to make sure we get any of the estimates that have to be licensed and insured people in the singular discipline that we're looking at for the price repair that we gave you. So with all of that said, are there any questions? Anybody still awake? Did I put you all to bed? Where are we at? Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> That's it. That's it. With that uh, price repair, is that yeah. under the same cost as a normal inspection or is that something that's a uh, cost to add on? Okay, so the repair price would be $99 to add on. But if you go ahead and go to our secondary, our uh, Elite Plus, it's part of the Elite Plus upgrade, which is $150. But if you just wanted the repair price, there'd be $99 add-on. Okay. And you can add that on up to 60 days after the inspection, by the way. Oh, okay. That's fine. I think that's kind of great because a lot of questions I get is, okay, fine. That's great. But how much is it going to cost to fix this or fix that or fix this? It gives them some sort of an idea. It's exactly, yeah, what we're hoping to do is, you know, I don't think anybody, right, became an agent to spend their Saturdays calling plumbers and electricians, right? You want to show some houses, make some money. So this way right. we can go ahead and take that burden off you a little bit to give you guys more room to grow your business. Okay. All right, well, here's all my comfort. Here's all my uh, contact information, guys. You see my phone number, my email. Feel free to reach out to me anytime you want. I pick up my phone seven days a week. You might hear my kids yelling in the background, but if you can get past that, I'm sure we can go ahead and, and get you guys taken care of. And again, please go ahead and text me your email address so I can get you the digital copy of the brochure and a sample report as well. Okay. Are there any more questions? Any other questions? For me. 
Again, speak now. Forever hold your peace. Don't ask me or Cindy later. <laughs> Feel free to ask me. That's another thing. If you guys have questions about anything, if it's vetting other companies, if it's what we do, if it's, you know, anything you need, I'd like to go ahead and be part of your team. So feel free to reach out to me if anything you need. If you want advice on haircuts, I can help you out with that. I'm here to help out, man. You know, that's part of it, right? Like, I'm here to be accessible. Um, hey, I Dustin, would- you might have got you might have gone over this. I apologize. Do you do you have a certain territory that you go to or won't go to, for example? No. So I'm actually so because I'm a district manager or a territory manager, I don't do actual inspection. No, no, but like your company. Yeah. And so anywhere, pretty much Oxnard, all the way down to uh, the Mexican border. Okay. Yeah. There, you go. There, isn't, there isn't much we say no to. And if there's areas I can't get to, chances are I can give you a referral. Great. Perfect. 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 Well, let me. All right. This then. Other no, questions to... before Dustin finishes. Other questions? Yes. No. All right. Dustin, what were you going to say? I was going to say, you know, now that we know it's an unregulated industry, we know there's a lot that it takes in order to be a really good inspection company. I don't want you guys to ever settle for good or just be good. I want you guys to be elite. So you better call me. Appreciate it. All right, everybody, unmute yourselves. Thank you, Dustin. Greatly appreciate you being here. This was a lot of really good information. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Does everybody have his contact information? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Call the man.